Hello everyone, my name is Arshit from Code Heroku and in today's video we will be going over how to use YOLO object detection on a custom dataset. At Code Heroku, our mission is to make world class computer science and engineering education accessible to millions of students, especially in developing countries like India. In this video, we'll talk about why we need to create a custom object detection model, how to create a custom dataset and then train the model on it and then we'll create a mask detector using YOLO. YOLO stands for you only look once and it's one of the most popular algorithms for real-time object detection. YOLO version 5 is the latest version and it outperforms all the previous version in terms of COCO AP metrics and frames per second. It is based on PyTorch framework and developed by Ultralytics. So why do we need to create a custom model? There are plenty of object detection models available online. However, they are trained on general datasets. So if you want to detect a particular object for a specific task, the model might not be able to detect it. For example, in this image, you can see that the model detected three objects, a dog, a bicycle and a truck. However, there are plenty of other objects that the model did not detect. For example, what if you wanted to detect the tree behind the bicycle or the dustbin in front of the truck? Hence. The need for models to detect the objects that the user wants to detect is important. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, it is important to make sure that every person wears a mask outside. But you can't use the models already, already available online for this task. Hence, we are going to learn how to create a custom mask detector to make sure every person outside is protected. And the output of our model will be similar to the second image. Now we'll talk about how to create a custom dataset. There are different kind of object detection algorithms available and each of them follow a different labels format. For YOLO algorithm, for each image, there should be a corresponding text file with the same name. The text file should contain one row per object in the image. The format is that the bounding box coordinates must be normalized. Their values must lie between 0 and 1. The label for each object must contain the class, the center coordinate on the x-axis, the center coordinate on the y-axis, and the width and height of the object. And all of these values must be separated by a space in between. If the coordinates for the object are not normalized, then the x-center and width of the object must be divided by the total image width. And similarly, y-center and height should be divided by the total image height. The class labels should always be zero indexed. For example, the labels for this image will be this. You can see that for the three objects in this image, there are three rows. You can see that the class for person is zero and as there are two persons in the image, there are two rows with class zero. Similarly, the X and Y coordinates refer to the center coordinates of the bounding box for this object. And you can see that the values lie between 0 and 1. After this class, we add the x center and y center coordinate and then the width and the height. Now that you know how to create your own custom data set, we are going to see how to create our own custom mask detector. Now we are going to learn how to create labels for the images in our custom data set. There are many data annotation tools available online like CVAT, LabelMaker, Makesense.ai. We are going to use Makesense.ai. So go to Google and go to Makesense.ai. Then click on Get Started. Then click on Drop Images. And now you can select the images in your custom data set. I am going to upload just one sample image to show how it works then click on object detection now if you have the list of objects your data set has in a text file then you can upload that file otherwise you can click the box in the middle and add labels manually 
since we are creating a mask detector we have only one label called mask and once you add that you can click on start project now you can see the image in the middle and a crosshair now go to the top left corner of the object you want to draw and then create a bounding box around it once you do that you can see a select label option on the right panel go to that panel and select the object for your bounding box next go to actions on the left panel click on export annotations there are many options available over here since we are creating a YOLO model click on the first option that you see and then click on export now this will download a zip file that contains the label file now go to the directory where the file is downloaded and extract that zip file then you will see a text file with the same name as the image you uploaded click on the text file and now you can see the YOLO format bounding box coordinates separated by space now that you know how to create your own custom data set the next task is to create our own YOLO model so go to Google and search for YOLO v5 and then click on the first link with the name Ultralytics then go to code and copy the URL next we're going to go to Google Colab then create a new notebook we're going to take advantage of Google Colab's GPU runtime environment so go to runtime and click change runtime and make sure it is set to GPU and then save now click on connect now while it is connecting you can go ahead and write the first line to clone the git repository so write git clone and then paste the URL and once it is connected you can run the cell next click on the folder on the left panel and you can see your YOLO v5 directory expand it and you can see that in the directory there is a requirement.txt file to download all the dependencies for the model so we are going to change the active running directory to YOLO v5 and then use pip to download the dependencies from the requirements.txt file once the dependencies are downloaded we need to upload a custom data set so in order to do that we need to expand the data directory right click and then create a new folder we'll name this folder custom data set under this folder you can add your training validation and test sets we'll create just a train folder as we want our model to overfit then under training we'll create the images folder and then we'll create the labels folder now I have already created a training set with 50 images of people wearing masks I also have the labels directory with 50 text files containing labels now we can upload the images from our dataset to images folder so I'll select all the images and upload now the larger the dataset is the more time it will take to upload Once they are uploaded, 
Next, we'll upload the label text files. So select all labels and up open. So once you have uploaded your data set, we need to create a YAML file in the data directory. A YAML file is essentially a configuration file which will tell our model where the data set is and about the data set. So we'll create a new file and call it dataset.yaml. Now double click on the file to open it. In this file, first we need to give the path to the training data set. So we'll write train and then the path. The YOLO code is configured in a way that it automatically replaces the images at the end with labels to get the label files. And since we're open fitting, we'll give that validation data set the same, training, uh, the same path as our training data set. Then we write NC, which is basically the total number of unique classes that our data set has. Since we have only math, we'll write one. Then we write names, which is basically a list that will contain the names of all those classes. So we'll write mask again. Once you're done with this, just save the file and go back to notebook. Now we'll start training. So we'll type python train.py, then image argument, which is basically the size of the images. So we'll write 600 and then the data argument and we'll give dataset.yaml as value then epochs argument and we'll give 50 and then weights and we'll write yolo v5s.pt yolo version 5 has four model sizes the small medium large and extra large we'll use the small version now run the cell Then you'll see some information. You can also see the hyperparameter values of our model. And then it will download the YOLO version 5S model weights. Then after a few seconds, you will be able to see the model design. And then you can see that it shows that it's logging the results and the path for that. And now our model has started training. Once the training is complete, you can see the total time taken and you can also see that the best and last epoch weight files are saved along with their sizes. Now you can minimize the data directory and you now you can see a new runs directory. Under this, you can see train and then experiment directory and under that you can see various files and images you can also see the f1 score and the pr curve you can also see the weights directory that contains the weight files so you can download these for later use then if you scroll down you can see the training results on the image batches we're going to view the training batch 2 and then open the image in a new tab now you can see that the model has fit our training set perfectly the model has detected mass on all these images. If you're happy with the result of your model, you can move to the next stage. So now we're going to upload a test image for inference. So I'm going to click on upload and then upload a new image. Once the image is uploaded to run the inference code, you need to type python detect.py then source argument which is going to be our test image so I'm going to write test.jpg and then I need to give the weight file as an argument so I'm going to give the best weight file in order to do that I need to give the full path of the file so runs train x weights and then best.pt and then I'm going to run this code 
and then you will see some information again and finally you will see that the results are saved in the runs directory under detect folder. So click on the refresh button and go to runs detect experiment and now you can see the image. So double click on the test image and open that in the new tab. And now you can see that our model has detected two masks in the test image perfectly. The confidence score is lower because our data set was small so the model is not very sure about how masks look. However, the results are still very accurate. If you have a bigger data set, your model will have a higher confidence level. However, for now, we are happy with the result. And now, you know how to train YOLO on your own custom data set. So in this video, we learned how to create our own data set for YOLO object detection. We also created a mask detector using YOLO version 5. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new today. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and also subscribe to our channel.